earlier in the day, which is very unusual to see all top five players uh, not change a bit. Stubborn seven pin in the sixth for Kim Terrell. Kim Terrell really opening up a little bit wide that time. Uh, sent the ball a little too far to the right. Uh, didn't quite make it back, but she was able to create the area to get it back to the pocket. Well, she told me, I do have a touch of a room to the right here this evening, so if I do make a mistake, I'm going to find out where my boundaries are to the right. I know if I tug it a little bit, i got problems. I think Kim just sent this one, uh, like you mentioned, a little too far to the right. This ball goes out to about the third, fourth board and then starts to make the break back. As you can see there, the ball coming in a little bit light. The head pin coming off, hitting the four, and nothing manages to take out the seven. Still almost carried the light hit, though. Came back a long way. Finds herself trailing now by 10 as we enter the latter stages of game number one. No time like the present. Now, see, that ball was left from the very beginning, but as she staggers back with a smile, it kind of held the pocket. She's surprised. So we'll take a break here. It's a 10-pin lead for Robin Romeo, who has four in a row. Will the streak continue? We'll come on back and find out. The makers of hammer bowling balls, John Wonders to your left, the president of Fab Ball Missouri, and of course, our uh, host in Baltimore earlier this year, Dennis Baldwin. Well, they've really supported the ladies' professional bowling through the years. Uh, three national stops this year, and uh, they've got their hands involved. Uh, the ladies tour and a very new member of the hammer staff robin romeo just signed on with the fab ball company just that, two weeks ago is that why those guys showed up tonight i think they would have been <laughs> here anyway see if their newest staff member could maybe win well i'll tell you what she has really bowled over the last month like she did uh, a year ago when she just made final after final and challenged for every show and uh, very methodical, business-like player. Not much emotion. Just go out and execute and get the job done. Well, after winning five titles uh, last year, Denny really saw things go her way, and uh, things really haven't gone her way so far this year. She has only won one match out of uh, six television appearances. You know, and she told me as well, she said, you know, as hard as I tried, uh, you know, the motivation, the desire, you know, I, I wanted to enjoy what I accomplished, uh, setting records and, and being the player of the year, and she said, you know, it's awful tough to try and get all that back in a short span of time because she didn't really bowl much when she finished up last season. She took some time off and enjoyed it. Well, I think we saw the same thing happen with Lisa Wagner. Just prior to uh, the year Robin did so well, uh, Lisa Wagner set all the records, and then last year she felt the same way, the motivation. You just give it everything you've got, and, uh, you know, you need that mental break. Mm -hmm. Well, she leads by seven. Yeah, she stands up and takes a look at the ten pin. In the eighth frame. Robin Romeo, the defending champion, did qualify number one here last year. She beat Carolyn Hodge in the final match, 208 to 166. And Carolyn Hodge made the finals here again this year. Finished in the top 24, so obviously there are certain bowling centers that players bowl well in year in and year out. Lori Nichols is one of those. She's pretty much owned to this place. Very confident uh, player here and in coming into Rockford. She's made six telecasts out of the past 10 years, so uh, that's a pretty good record. Lori's biggest problem here, trying to find enough tickets to give away to the relatives. Oh my, solid nine pin and a glare from Kim Terrell, and rightfully so. Solid nine pin, the day and age of the urethane bowling ball. Denny as the ball hits the pocket it just is continually driving whereas it usually has a tendency to deflect to take out that nine pin. Well, Kim realizes you got to take the good with the bad. She got a great break on the shot on lane seven when she pulled it a little bit and struck and then she probably threw her best shot of the night and left the solid nine. Well Kim really one of the only players on the telecast that likes to go away with the ball. Uh, the other four players are a little bit more direct. Of course, if she strikes there, she leads by three. So that's one of the reasons why she was visibly upset. A very tough break there in the eighth frame. Could still shoot 229. But and Robin could shoot 236. And of course, uh, these women are going to put me in my place when I mention that uh, the scores could be low in the first couple games, which see, I'm glad to see they're higher, though. <laughs> experience will teach you. Mike doesn't even predict anymore what's going to happen in the first couple of games. He just he just watches because he knows it always flips around. Bad break there on the pocket 7-10. Kim saying, you know, 
They have a solid nine on the right lane, throw a pretty good shot here, and not a bad break. Really sending this ball wide. Watch the ball before the breaking point here as it goes out again to about the third or fourth board. Not quite making it back with enough force. The five pin actually goes in front of the seven pin. She leaves the ten. You've got to trust the ball to the right. You know, she threw a good shot. She felt uh, it should have made it back. Tough break because when you stand up on a strike and hit the pocket twice and then come away with nine spare and nine out, you have to shake your head. Robin Romeo could really lock up match number one here in the ninth frame. Very aggressive shot there by Robin Romeo. That's been one of her key assets. Her father, Ray Romeo, looking on, was in town this week, brought her nephew. Dave. Well, her younger sister Tori made the finals as well, so it was a pretty solid week for the Romeo family. Family week here in Rockford. Back up at the 10 pin, so a spare in the ninth. And she's in an excellent position to wrap up match number one. There you see Kim could basically shoot just 206, so a mark and Robin advances to game number two. Still a breath of life, though, for Kim Terrell, who has to be lamenting that 7 10 of the ninth. Well, Robin's probably trying to get even, Denny, as uh, she met Kim in Winter Park and Clearwater earlier this year when Kim was on, and Kim was able to come away to. The victor in those two matches, so Robin's going, hey, you know, it's, maybe it's my turn to win. <laughs> well, if you're out here long enough and you continue to make enough telecasts, uh, it all comes out in the wash and basically evens up as Robin Romeo will go on to win match number one. Kim Terrell, who right now is in a heated battle for Player of the Year honors, will have to settle for fifth place this week. Well, Kim can look on it this way. She doesn't have to meet her roommate, Jackie Sellers. That's got to be very difficult. Of course, uh, your first title. Didn't you have to bowl Lori Nichols? That's right. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's got to be a difficult thing, you know, when you travel with somebody and live with somebody, and then you have to go out and beat them for a title. There you go. Business-like, as I mentioned, no big deal. Just right into the 1-3 pocket. And that was uh, for the first shot in the 10th frame, the strike that uh, gave her the tie, or champion. So she wins match number one and shoots a game of 215. So. Kim Terrell, who comes into this one with two victories on the season, will leave the same way and pack her bags and start charting uh, the course for Houston, Texas. Fair lane Southway. Of course, you strike on the fill ball. And we'll uh, take a break here. Coming up next, Jackie Sellers and Robin Romeo here in Rockford, Illinois. Stay tuned.